Hello, my name is Paul Bouchard uh, from Diversion Cinema uh, based in Paris, France, and I'm very happy to be here to introduce you this uh, little talk uh, about VR exhibition and international distribution. And thank you a lot to the BFAN Film Festival for welcoming us uh, in this uh, 2020 edition. Uh, BFAN Film Festival is a really important festival for us because, uh, like I'm going to explain, we have a strong relation with Korea. Uh, starting in our distribution activity. Uh, as our lineup, uh, we have like several uh, productions from Korea, like Eyes in the Headwind, uh, that was in the uh, Sundance Film Festival in 2018, uh, An Obituary also in 2018 in the Tribeca Film Festival where it premiered, uh, and also a VR documentary like Bloodless uh, that won the prestigious uh, Storytelling Awards in Venice Film Festival in 2017. We also keep working with uh, talents from Korea and we have new projects, exciting projects, immersive and virtual reality projects to come soon to be announced. Uh, this presentation uh, is going to focus on our uh, experience uh, in uh, distribution, international distribution mainly. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit the background of the company. Um, what we are doing right now and what are our perspective and project for the future regarding our strategy and our approach of international distribution of immersive experiences. Just to start, as I said, Diversion Cinema is based in Paris, France. Uh, the company is well known uh, in the beginning for providing equipment and solution to showcase VR, virtual reality, uh, to our clients. Uh, among our clients, we have like lots of film festivals, like the prestigious uh, Venice Film Festival, the IDFA in Amsterdam. We worked also a lot with the Marché du Film in Cannes and many festivals around France and Europe. We also have different clients like uh, broadcasters and producers. Uh, we work with Arte TV in France, by instance, and prestigious uh, museum uh, where we have been showcased uh, some greatest uh, VR work, uh, like we work for the Musée d'Orsay and Le Louvre uh, recently. Um, in this context, uh, we worked a lot with the producers in exhibiting their work in, in a different location. And it's how little by little uh, comes the idea at Diversion Cinema to launch like a, a department dedicated to distribution, international distribution, of uh, these VR experiences and it's how we launched two years and a half ago the distribution department and what we we can say today is that there is a, a real synergy in between or both activity uh, or activity of service for instance uh, developed uh, like a real expertise uh, expertise in our team regarding the ability to uh, identify and uh, quote how much it's going to cost and what's going to be the need in terms of human needs and technical equipment to showcase such or such experience. It's something that is really important uh, today in distribution. It's to understand if you want to showcase <coughs> a VR experience somewhere, uh, you have to identify first how much it's going to cost, what are the required condition you need to showcase it in good quality, in good uh, context. And it's how this synergy in between our technical and service department and the distribution department um, was a very good uh, starting point uh, for our company. Um, so what we identify really quickly, uh, if we want to summarize at the, the beginning of our distribution activity, is that we know that exhibiting is not free. It's something that we know through service uh, activity, uh, having the material to manage the material and also to welcome people when you want to showcase VR. It is not something uh, for free. And looking after viewer also, it's really important. Uh, it's not like you make an installation and then it work alone. No, you always need to welcome the people, to introduce them the experience in a good condition and to make sure they understand and also that the technology uh, works smoothly for guarantee like a good exhibition condition. Um, and that's what we want today. I think that for a better distribution, what we need today is to identify what are like, the technical needs of a VR experience you want to distribute. And having this really like quoting expertise really help uh, to, to distribute. 
So at Diversion Cinema, our distribution department is composed uh, today around like 15, almost like 20 immersive experience that we distribute worldwide and we represent worldwide on the different markets. Um, how do we distribute? I'm going to summarize quickly. The first step of distribution, and you know it because we had the BFAN today, is of course to distribute in festivals. Festival for us, they are key in the distribution process. Why? It's because we are distributing um, artistic VR experience or narrative experiences that are not necessarily big video games or big IP. So having the step of festival, it's really important for them to be recognized uh, and uh, to make them known by uh, the market, to give them some visibility and recognize as artistic experience. That's why like a selection in a class A film festival uh, or being like here in the BFAN, it's a first step for an experience to be recognized and uh, to, 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 to start a distribution uh, career. Um, so among these festivals, you know, most of them, I guess, but uh, I, there is a big fan here, but there are like a, a festival in a Melbourne Film Festival, South by Southwest in United States with Sundance and Tribeca. Uh, they are among the, the most important ones. But they are also the Kaohsiung Film Festival in Taiwan, New Images in Paris, Venice Film Festival, Venice Film Festival of course, the Via Ham, uh, Litfa for documentary and uh, many other. Uh, and what is uh, great is that right now there is more and more festival embracing immersive technology. Uh, so we start to work with festivals that are not necessarily linked to film festival, but some of them like LEV in in Spain or uh, some other one like Ars Electronica directly connected to uh, the digital uh, and uh, new technological arts. Uh, which is uh, really important because it connects with uh, other markets, uh, other community. And this is what is great, uh, working with immersive technology, is uh, because you are permanently on the crossroad in between different worlds, different disciplines, uh, which make it really exciting. Then the second step, it's maybe the one that's going to interesting, interest you the most, is where do we distribute? I would say uh, if you talk to most of the people from the VR community today, uh, the classic, I would say, uh, strategy for distribution is to aim at uh, these three different categories. Uh, first one is what we can call the VR cinema. Uh, they have the location uh, dedicated <coughs> to uh, VR experiences and I would say two experiences yeah, that you can find in festivals. So among this one, uh, I talk for instance about We Are Cinema in Switzerland, uh, Everbeat, uh, Limina Immersive in UK, or uh, the VR uh, Kaohsiung Film Lab in Taiwan, with whom we regularly work. Uh, they have like the new system of synchronized uh, VR headset where we, they can screen uh, 360 VR experiences and also uh, beside uh, installation for interactive experiences. Uh, by instance, at Diversion, we also uh, manage one of these VR cinema at the Forum des Images, uh, which is more like an event happening every Saturday, every week, called Les Samedi de la VR. And this is a great window to show artistic uh, experiences, documentary or uh, linear fiction uh, in 360. Then there is what we call uh, also the LBE, or I would say the VR Arcade. They are this location uh, more based on the concept of uh, location arcade uh, for video games. And this is this location uh, that are showcasing mainly interactive and try to engage an audience uh, looking for entertainment uh, and more based on the video games or interactive uh, multi-user experiences. Uh, among this one, we can talk about Voyager in Brazil, by instance. Uh, we can talk about VR World uh, in USA, with who we are working, uh, which is really interesting. And then we have uh, more the online distribution. And the online distribution uh, is based uh, sometimes on the stores, uh, which is really good for more interactive experience of store. Uh, from uh, the main uh, company like Oculus, uh, Vive, uh, but also the store like Steam, where you can upload yourself your VR experiences and you get to share 
uh, from the sales on the platform, uh, but also they are like some more curated uh, platform online, uh, like uh, Veer, uh, a company based in China but present worldwide, or uh, Amaze VR or Within, that are like uh, putting at disposal of the audience a, a catalog, a library with some contents for free, and part of the library is accessible on SVOD uh, system, so you have to pay uh, by subscription. Uh, to access uh, the library. Uh, this is three classical category of distribution, uh, but uh, what we identify a few years ago already is that there is also a, a large range of location where you can potentially exhibit immersive experience, uh, but locations that are not corresponding to a precise uh, business model. Uh, we call these uh, locations, uh, cultural location by instance, uh, we say just location, not LB location, uh, that can be like cultural location, museums or gallery by instance. You have more and more museum dedicated part of the programmation to new technology, you have some venues specialized into digital arts, uh, and some gallery who try to, to develop and start to showcase um, artistic experience using this new technology. Um, this is uh, like a market, this location, which is really interesting for us, with what we engage and develop like a, a network little by little. Uh, and that's something that uh, really fits, in fact, uh, the, the experience for a presence through our lineup, because they are locations that are like listen and, and try to really catch the uh, artistic nature of the experience we represent but also to satisfy and to make it possible to deal with such uh, location we need to provide and uh, to propose a concrete exhibition and a business model uh, to make it like uh, uh, relevant in the context of their uh, programmation. So this is on what we are working right now a lot and among this experience we propose to this kind of location recently we had like the experience ayahuasca that i'm going to develop a little bit uh, which is interesting because ayahuasca was selected at the bifan 2017 uh, 19 so last year <clears throat> and for uh, this experience we saw that it was great because it started in good festival but for going further uh, we also developed like a concept of mini exhibition around the VR experience. Uh, this mini exhibition, uh, we did the premiere last year uh, at uh, the IFI Museum in Amsterdam. You can see some pictures here, you have some slides. Uh, as you can see, the idea started through discussion with uh, the director, Jan Kunen, uh, who, produced, uh, who directed the experience and with the producer Atlas 5. Uh, based on some artworks, uh, drawing he did after his uh, shamanic ayahuasca experience in Amazonia, he did like many of these drawings and things like that, and based on this with the producer and with the studio small, uh, they uh, developed and created uh, the VR experience. But what is interesting is that collecting all these art artworks and painting from the director, we decided that maybe we could propose to uh, an exhibition location to show, beside to the VR installation, to show these artworks like a painting or photography exhibition. And attached to that, we also record like an interview of the director, collected some clips from the documentary about uh, the shamanic culture in Amazonia. We also recorded some soundtrack and also uh, designed a concept of installation to host like uh, five to eight people in the same time uh, under the VR experience. And it's how we design, uh, with many partners, little by little, we design this concept of the shamanic exhibition that we premiered at the IFI Museum, but then we start to engage discussion with other exhibition location, and it's where uh, the, the exhibition is going next, uh, because it's going to showcase in Taiwan at the Digital Art Center uh, at the VR Hub in, in Taiwan, and also soon in, uh, in, in Brussels, and we have also other discussion going with uh, exhibition location in Europe. 
And here, uh, the idea of the shamanic exhibition, of having an, an exhibition packaged around a specific VR experience, it's all not only uh, to provide a, uh, an exhibition method for the VR experience, it's also a way to provide uh, to a potential exhibitor partner some key uh, figures uh, to understand what are going to be uh, the investment at the beginning, but what is also the potential incomes uh, they can make, uh, they can generate with a such uh, exhibition concept. I mean by that, that of course, uh, having the shamanic exhibition, for talking about this example, uh, it's going to cost uh, to have the material, to uh, make the installation, the scenography, and everything, to train the host and hostess, so there will be an investment at the beginning. But here, we also provide some figures uh, that will help them um, to calculate uh, through uh, the ticket sales, by instance, how much uh, they can uh, earn uh, after how long, after how many tickets they can recoup their initial investment and maybe to generate some incomes, uh, some profit uh, uh, after uh, some time. So it's really important to, to give this package with all these additional figures to help the potential exhibitor of virtual reality because maybe they are not used at all to show uh, virtual reality uh, experiences to, to provide them all this technical uh, solution uh, expertise but also providing them these uh, figures and estimates to help them to calculate what's going to be the investment and the potential incomes. And doing that, uh, we provide like a whole uh, package uh, that's really help in terms of distribution uh, to engage uh, collaboration with uh, this, this uh, cultural location, exhibition, venue. Um, in this context, one of the other examples of experience we are working on right now uh, is a one uh, born from a collaboration in between French and Korean culture uh, because the artist is French Korean. Uh, her name is uh, Ayun Kwon. Uh, she is also like a co founder of the studio Inner Space based in Paris. Uh, and, and one of uh, her new experiences, this new experience, is called Peach Garden based on a famous uh, old uh, painting from Korea. Um, the Peach Garden experience is really interesting because it's only dedicated to a location exhibition. It is not supposed to be distributed uh, online. And why? Because the concept requires like a really specific uh, location to exhibit it. It's a wireless VR experience using the Oculus Quest technology. It means a headset without connection to a computer. It means the spectator Experiences, uh, experiencing this experience uh, can walk freely uh, on a really big size, uh, like 200, 200 square meters. Uh, and for that, you need a venue with uh, such a big room. But once you have that, uh, it's open like a really new uh, experience perspective uh, to the spectator. Uh, the first time I tried the prototype, it was really amazed because I had never experienced such a free uh, virtual walk in a fantastic surreal landscape and garden and it's really beautiful experience that make like uh, a real connection in between the contemporary art experimentation and also the joy the playfulness of a, a video game interactive experience we are really again at the crossroad in between uh, two worlds and it works wonderfully uh, and we will uh, be proud to announce soon uh, the first step of the uh, Peach Garden exhibitions uh, around the world. It's a pleasure to work on such experience. Uh, but once again, it's here uh, coming with a, an experience packaged uh, with, with a concept uh, where we can like supply to the different location uh, the system, uh, the, head, the headset, and also the process of management uh, of the audience to be able uh, to set up easily, efficiently this experience in different place around the world uh, and to make it like uh, uh, adaptable and uh, uh, simple to, to, to showcase uh, in, in different locations who want to show it. Um, and want to can it participate to our strategy to uh, make a bridge in between this new technology 
and uh, the artistic and cultural location that could be a potential partner for showcasing such experience as Peach Garden. Uh, I show you a few images about it. So here, after these two examples, uh, we can come to one conclusion is that strategy for distribution is not the same depending on the nature of the VR experience you distribute. Uh, in the context of ayahuasca, you see that we had like a, a VR experience that can work freely uh, distributed online or in physical location. We designed like a concept, a package around to make it more distributable in uh, exhibition location. In the context of Peach Garden, we have one experience that is dedicated to be showcased in location on site and not there is no option for an online uh, uh, distribution. It's really built for being showcased in a specific big size area, uh, which makes the strategy really different for both of them because you don't have the same option uh, as one uh, can't be online and the other one was more maybe dedicated to be online, but we decide with uh, developing this concept of the installation uh, to, to push uh, forward the potential in uh, location exhibition, uh, which makes a strategy really different uh, from an experience to another one. And it's something that, <coughs> I come back to my uh, introduction of this presentation, is that you have to identify early enough what's going to be the concept or the context, the needs, what you require to exhibit an experience. And do you want to make your experience uh, famous, well-known through festivals and then go directly online? Or do you dedicate your experience to a, a location in a, a specific uh, uh, location? That's, that's a big question and really important for your distribution strategy. Um, if I can summarize quickly. Uh, for me, there is three kind of experiences. So ones that are going to be potentially big hits online uh, uh, through platforms, uh, but most of them, they are like video games or really big IP. If you're not that, you can be like interesting for online distribution, but also will uh, gain uh, to be exhibited in some festival and location. So it can be like the mixed experience for the online and location based. And then come the experiences that are designed with a special uh, setup that require like really specific equipment or introduction or interaction sometimes with real uh, performers, characters, set design, uh, accessory. And in this case, uh, they are like only dedicated to uh, location exhibitions. That's the case uh, for uh, Pitch Garden, but there are also many other experiences like that. And depending of the spectrum in between the uh, only online and the only location. They are like a big range of possibilities, uh, but it needs to be clearly identified early uh, enough in the process. With Diversion Cinema, uh, we've made the choice to focus more and more on the location uh, distribution because this is where all expertise in uh, providing uh, technical needs, installations, uh, human management uh, also makes sense to help the producer to identify the cost, to package, uh, and to present uh, the 
<coughs> experience also with the technical exhibition expertise. Uh, we are like following uh, this, uh, this, uh, this trend and digging it, but uh, also beside uh, there is like uh, to think sometimes for some experience what can be also the, the online distribution. So, so keep in mind uh, this aspect. Uh, also, in terms of distribution today, uh, we, can, we can't uh, avoid this point. There is also what's going to be exhibiting VR uh, after this uh, COVID pandemic wave we have been through. Uh, as I told you, we experienced like uh, Peach Garden and Ayahuasca the Shamanic exhibition are confirmed uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, for exhibition coming uh, within the next month and uh, next weeks. Uh, so how is it going to be to showcase such works uh, uh, to the public in physical uh, location exhibition space uh, after COVID? It's something we are working on right now. Uh, I can confirm that, uh, that uh, our team is already working on preparing some events that are going to happen also in September, October with festival, uh, public uh, exhibition festivals. Um, and in this context, uh, we are working on a new process uh, which is really important for us is to show to the audience uh, how clean, uh, what is the cleaning process for the headset and to making it part of the introduction to show that we are using specific tools and cleaning system uh, uh, with a, a specified homologation and certification to show that we are doing all the necessary to guarantee that the headset are clean and that we are not going to be uh, transmitting the COVID from a person to another with this system. Also, of course, there will be a process regarding management of the audience in order to keep like the social distance, uh, but we are used to that uh, and, uh, and I think it's totally possible to do it in good condition, respecting all this rule of social distancing. So yes, for us, uh, showcasing VR in public space after what we have been through this last month is totally possible uh, with an adapt adapted method and uh, process. So we arrive almost at the end of this presentation. Um, and I think what is important to tell you today is that it's really important for us uh, to keep working on showcasing immersive experience directly on site in physical location to the audience. Uh, because if we want to propose uh, substantial uh, artistic creation using new technology, sometimes really experimental, uh, we need to have location to be able to set up together this experience, uh, this technology, and to engage uh, a, a connection uh, with the public, with the public and the audience from these different uh, location partners. And uh, that's why it's important to keep thinking about that, to anticipate with uh, a new production project what are going the condition, the concept of exhibition, uh, on one part uh, to estimate the cost and to talk as soon as possible with the potential partner on uh, the investment uh, and the cost attached to the exhibition and that will help a lot to engage discussion and to be uh, productive and creative in uh, the exhibition process to distribute this experience but also uh, to design as soon as possible uh, installation experience uh, that are artistically uh, total and that work fine and put the audience in a good condition to experience uh, this project in the best condition. So working on that as soon as possible during the production process to anticipate this distribution strategy is key uh, to guarantee the success uh, at the distribution, international distribution and exhibition of uh, this project. Uh, right now uh, in the new project we have coming soon we are discussing at the production stage of this distribution strategy and, and problematic to anticipate as soon as possible and define with the producer uh, what is going to be uh, the distribution concept and define the strategy, uh, going to festival, location and online if it's necessary and uh, relevant. Um, and at this stage I can introduce you today like a new project uh, called Dreaming Zone and Dreaming Zone, I'm glad to, talk it, uh, to, to introduce it to you today because it's a project uh, with a screenwriter uh, from Korea uh, who based the story on, on true events. Uh, Dreaming Zone talked about 
uh, a, a little girl living in between the North and the South Korea uh, during uh, the war and uh, seeing this dreaming zone as like a fantastic world in between uh, two Korea uh, through a really a child but poetic way. So once again, it's it's like a really artistic way uh, to use this uh, new technology, not to make something too uh, straight, uh, uh, realistic, uh, but talking about something, a uh, conflict that is not easy to treat and, uh, and to using a poetic and child environment and uh, sensitiveness uh, to, 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 to express this story. So it's really beautiful. It's produced by a French a production uh, company uh, that once again uh, we will be really happy to introduce you soon uh, this uh, collaboration in between a French studio and a, a Korean scriptwriter. Um, we arrive at the end of this presentation so I was really happy uh, to, to, to share with you some insights about our distribution strategy and perspective with virtual reality. Uh, soon we will also start to work with new projects also uh, immersive but using other technologies and virtual reality and I can't wait to tell you more about it but for that uh, we will have to wait like a few extra months uh, so we will have new things hopefully for the BFAN next year. This year I'm really happy to be uh, here again with Diversion Cinema presenting new experience and making this online presentation and hope so soon next year we will be here in real uh, and in the meantime, if you have any question uh, or any comments, uh, don't hesitate to write us by email or to uh, contact us through uh, the organization from the festival. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for this invitation and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you a lot. Bye-bye.